Hi, folk. Welcome back. Before the break, we were looking at a uh, graph. And we were saying, well, what is a graph? And why is it important? And we said a graph was a picture of a scenario uh, that is occurring. And so we can look at a graph and get a good idea of what's actually happening in a, in a problem. Okay, we're going to carry on with that. And in this section, this is what we're going to look at. So we're going to look at what does it mean when a graph touches the axis? We're going to ask ourselves, what does it mean when a graph increases or decreases? The difference between discrete and continuous data. Okay, so let's get started straight away. Touching the axis. Now, we give you a problem. Before we even look at the problem, let's have a look at the graph and let's try and analyze this graph. What are the two quantities we are dealing with? What are the two things that we are forming a picture about? The one is the volume of water and it's in milliliters. And then the other one we're dealing with time in minutes. In other words, we're saying this, that before time begins, we've got 500 milliliters. Uh, after five minutes have gone, we've got no millimeters left at all. Okay. When I look at this graph as well, I can see it's a straight line. Can you see that? Which tells me that there is a constant. Whenever I see a straight line, it means there's a constant. There's something that's the same. And what's the same? The same thing is the number of millimeters is depending on the time. Okay, One uh, minute represents so many millimeters. Two minutes represents double those millimeters. Got that? The other thing that we've got to look at is this. This graph is going downhill. In other words, something's decreasing. What's decreasing? As my time is increasing, so my volume of water is decreasing. Wait, when does water decrease as time increases? Maybe if there's a leak. Okay? You imagine you've got a water bottle and it's now leaking. As time goes on, so the amount of water in that bottle decreases, decreases, decreases. Okay? Or it could be I've got a bucket of water and I'm pouring the water out. So as time's going on, so more and more and more water's going out. And remember, I'm not pouring water, then slowing down, then pouring more water. and slow. I'm pouring at a constant pace. How do I know it's constant? Because my line is in a straight line. There's a straight line graph. Straight line means there's a constant. Okay, now that we've looked at the graph and we've got a sense of what it's all about, let's read the question. My question says this. Tomelo empties his 500 millimeter water bottle at a constant rate. Okay, describe what you see in this graph. So again, he's got a 500 millimeter water bottle. All right. So when I start off, my bottle is full. Can you see that? Full 500 millimeters. As time goes, he's emptying the bottle. So I'm pouring water out into a glass, let's say, from my bottle. I'm pouring at a constant rate. Again, we know it's constant because my graph is straight. So quite frankly, they didn't even need to tell us it was at a constant rate. We should know that because my graph is a straight line. So do we see all that in our graph? Yes, we do see all that in our graph. Okay. Um, now, what I want us to take note of is this, that this graph starts cutting the axis and it ends by touching the horizontal axis. So we start by the vertical axis and we end at the horizontal axis. Now, we get a whole lot of graphs where we can start at different axes. Here, we're starting because before time has started, before I've started pouring, I've got 500 mils. After five minutes, ach shame, I got no water left in my container. If I were to give you a graph like this, and let's just find a nice graph here. Um, let's draw a straight line. If I were to give you a graph like this, okay, what would I be saying here? I would say that 
I'm touching at this point, which means that before time starts, I've got no water. As time goes on, I'm getting more water in my container. So my black line here shows me emptying my bottle. What do you think the blue line is showing? It's showing me I'm filling up my bottle with water. Okay. Why? Because as time's going, so I'm getting more water in my bottle. What else do I know? I know that that tap is running at a constant speed. Because if it wasn't running at a constant speed, my graph would look something like that. But it doesn't. It's a straight line. So the tap is running at a speed. Now, the other thing I need to ask you is this. Is my, gro is my um, water, did it empty quicker or did it fill up quicker? So let's have a look. It took how many minutes to empty my bottle? Five minutes. How many minutes did it take to fill up my bottle? Ten minutes. So if the tap was running much slower than I was pouring it out. Okay. How else can I know that? Let's look at the steepness of my graph. Look how steep this graph is compared to the steepness of that graph. This steepness tells me something's happening quicker. The shallower the graph, the slower something is happening. Sure, we are finding out so much information from these just simple little graphs. Absolutely critical. But you can see they're all touching the axes. Now, we can sometimes get a scenario where our graph doesn't touch an axis, like this scenario. Let's have a look at that. Okay. My goodness, what does that represent? Let's pretend I've got a motor car. Well, I do have a motor car. Okay. Let's pretend I'm going to give people a lift to work. And it's me in the front, because I'm driving. How cool is that? My buddy next to me and three buddies at the back. So there are five of us that can fit into this car. My petrol on a daily basis cost me a hundred rand. Okay, let's write that down here. So I'm going to pretend I pay a hundred rand for every trip. Now if I'm alone in that car, how much is it going to cost me? It's going to cost me a hundred rand. So when I've got one person in the car, it costs me a hundred rand. When I've got five people in the car, we're taking, it's still going to cost me 100 Rand petrol. But now I'm sharing the cost between five people. So now five people, it's only going to cost me 20 Rand. But an important thing is this graph. You will notice it doesn't cut my vertical axis and it's not cutting my horizontal axis. In fact, my graph has got to start at that point. It can't go any closer to my axis. Why not? Because, folk, the minimum number of people in a car is one. I can't get half a person in a car. I can't get a quarter of a person in a car. It's one person. So there's one person in the car, and that so happens to be me. Right. No less than that. Now, if we look here, you can see we're stopping at 5. Why are we stopping at 5? We're stopping at 5 because I can't get more people into my car. Right. And it's going to stop at 20 because each person is going to pay 20 rand. Let's pretend I had a huge car. Okay, and I could fit a thousand people in my car. Okay, now we really got to use our imagination here. This line here would carry on and 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 on all the way through to a thousand. And this graph would carry on and on and on and on and on and on, but it would never, ever, ever touch my horizontal axis. Why not? Because independent on how many people are in that car, everyone has got to pay something because I've got to make up a hundred rand. And if it touches that axis, it's saying all those people don't have to pay anything. So if I put a billion people in the car, no one has to pay anything. Why? Because uh, we touched the axis. Well, that's rubbish. 
we still got to make 100 rand. Even if everyone pays one cent, okay? And there are a whack of people in their car, they've got to add up all those one cents and eventually get 100 rand. So no way could we ever put people in a car and say your trip is free. They've always got to pay something because that trip costs 100 rand. So this graph is never going to cut this axis and this graph is never going to cut that axis. Does that make sense? The next thing I want to bring uh, to your attention is this. That here I've drawn a straight line. But this line should actually be a dotted line. Why a dotted line? Okay, and we'll have a look at that shortly. Right, let's have a look here. Graphs grow, going up and graphs going down. Okay, so graph either increases or it decreases. This graph over here is increasing. Why? Because in English we read from left to right. And when I look at my graph, I'm also going to read from left to right. And when I look from left to right, I can see that this graph is going up. So we say my graph is increasing. When I read from left to right in this graph, I can see that my graph is going down. And down, decreasing. Okay. Now, the other thing we've got to look at graphs is the actual slopes. So I want to look at my two increasing graphs. That's this graph and this graph. Okay. Now, both of them are increasing. Would you agree? Well, you have to agree. Because from left to right, I'm going up. From left to right, I'm going up. But look at the slope of my graph. Here I have a steep slope. Here I have a gentle slope. So if I was speaking about speed and, and time, I would say over a period of time, this guy's suddenly going quickly. Uh, suddenly going fast, very quickly, okay? This guy, over the same period of time, he's going, increasing his speed very slowly. It's a gentle curve. If I wanted to look at that in the form of money, and let's say I said apples, uh, the number of apples and cost, over here, my apples are pretty expensive. Over here, my apples are not so expensive because there's a gentle slope. Okay, let's change color, and now let's look at decreasing graphs. Both are decreasing. Why? Because when I read from left to right, I can see that they are going downhill. Okay, this guy is going down over here, and this guy is also going down, but look at the steepness. This is going uh, down very quickly, and that's going down not so quickly. Okay, reminds me of my driving and my wife's driving. I see a robot coming up, I apply brakes gently, and slowly my car comes to a standstill. My wife, on the other hand, waits for the very last minute, slams brakes, and we come to a screeching halt. All right, can you see that? The difference in the actual slopes tells a story. So not only are we saying, hey, we're going up, but we now can say, gee, we're going up quickly. Or chief, we're going up gently. We're going down, we're going down quickly, we're going down gently. Right. Now, continuous and discrete graphs. Now, remember I told you just now that um, we can get uh, solid line graphs and dotted line graphs. What is the difference? Okay, and this is what we're going to look at here. When I look at this graph in front of me, I've got the number of people and the number of people on a bus. So bus trip number one, I had uh, just more than 20 people. And how many people? Well, one block represents 10 people. So half a block is going to represent five people. So I've got 25 people on this bus trip. Okay, over here, I've got 20 people. The next time I get on a bus, the third time I got on the bus, there were 45 people on that bus. Sure, fourth bus trip, there were 55 people on. The next bus trip, 40. And the final trip of the day, uh, there were 60 people on the bus. Okay, now, we know there's nothing constant in this graph. 
It didn't mean that every time we got on a bus, the numbers increased by the same amount. Because if it did, I'd have a straight line graph. This graph is no way a straight line. In fact, it's all jiggity-jaggity all over the place, which means there's nothing constant. We cannot say that the number of people on a bus is dependent on the, num uh, the bus trip number. It doesn't work like that. Okay? There's no correlation. There's no link between the two. But if you look at this graph, you'll see it's a dotted line. And why is it a dotted line? Well, it's a dotted line for two reasons, and this is it. Firstly, we're dealing in people. In fact, you can't get half a person. Okay? You can't say, gee, I got on this bus, and there were 23 and a half people on the bus with me. No, there were either 22 people on the bus, or 23 people on the bus, or 24 people on the bus. You can't have half a person. Even if it's a small little baby, it's still a person. Okay? When you get on an airline, before the pilot takes off, he's got to know how many passengers are on his aeroplane. Okay? That's a legal requirement. He's got to know. He doesn't turn around and say, oh, Keith, there's a baby, so we've got 22 and a half people on this aeroplane. No, no, there are 23 people on the aeroplane. Okay? And because of that, if I do solid lines, it means I'm saying, hey, you can get half a person, you can get quarter of a person, you can get an eighth of a person, hogwash. The other thing is we're dealing in bus trips. Bus trip number one, bus trip number two, bus trip number three. There's not bus trip number one and a half. You're either on the bus for the first time and then the second time, you can't say, gee, uh, this is my one and a half time that I've been on a bus today. Oh, that doesn't make sense at all. Okay. So as soon as there's no continuous data, as soon as I can't have um, numbers between one and two, then I've got to start using dotted lines. Let's have a look at this graph now. This graph is saying the distance traveled kilometers over time. Now I'm dealing in a solid line. Why am I dealing in a solid line? Because I could travel 25 kilometers. I could travel one kilometer. I could travel 149 kilometers. Okay? You can't say you can only travel zero or 50 or 100 or 100. No, you can travel all kinds of kilometers. And time as well. It's not just in minutes. I could be traveling for one minute, for three minutes, for 10 minutes for 20 minutes, okay? There are a number of times, I could even be traveling for three minutes and 32 seconds. Three minutes, 32,84 seconds. Or 32 minutes, 14 seconds and 68 hundredth of a second. Can you see that? So it's not defining my time. It's not defining my distance. So I could use a solid line. All right then, in summary, in this segment we've covered the following. We've looked at the meaning of touching the axes, we've looked at increasing and decreasing graphs, and we've looked at continuous and discrete data. We're going to take a break, you're going to come back, and we're going to carry on doing some more graphs. Chat soon.